that are fire uh, station. In order for us to be able to have a, a conversation about this, I think it's really important to understand some key concepts and terms. And this is something I teach at Trent University. So I'm just going to introduce you to some of the concepts that uh, I share with my students as well. And this is called Antennas 101. This is called uh, a cellular base station, and it consists of tower that holds the antennas. In Europe, they call it a mast, so that's how you might be able to see it in the literature. It has, this particular one has quite a few antennas on it, uh, and it's in Toronto, by the way. The third part uh, of one of these cellular base stations is the cabin that contains the electrical supply. Now, these antennas look very different and they have different functions. The ones at the top are omnidirectional, which means they radiate in all directions. And one of the ways that you can think about them is like an incandescent light bulb that simply gives light in all directions. We have some that are point-to-point -point antennas. And here you can imagine a laser where you beam the laser to another antenna that picks up the signal. And the third type of antenna we have here is called a sector antenna, which simply radiates in a certain direction. And uh, one of the ways to think of a sector antenna is like a flashlight. So when you beam a flashlight in a direction, the light doesn't go everywhere. Now let's take a look at the antenna on the uh, uh, Bronte Fire Hall. Here you can see that there are three antennas um, that are point to point. If we move up, we have some sector antennas. These are the 2G and 4G antennas. And then we have something called a, a 4G antenna. You can see here that they're much broader uh, than the 2G um, and 3G antennas. Now, what does 4G mean? It actually means fourth generation, whereas 2G and 3G refer to third generation. These antennas have different carrier frequencies. Here we can see the 2,000. Um, 2,600 megahertz for the 4G antenna. And you can simply think of these, they're carrier frequencies, they're carrying information. And so you can think of them almost as vehicles or trains or buses or something. And this is the cargo that they're carrying. In some cases, uh, it's movies uh, or data, uh, internet access, text, voice. Um, so this is what the information is that they're carrying. And now we have an example of how these antennas should work. This is a sector antenna, and ideally, this is the type of radiation you should get from it. In reality, however, these antennas have something called a side lobe, which means that some of the radiation is going to be in, uh, given off in a direction that they really don't want it to go. And if we look at the uh, radiation pattern, we can see here um, that uh, you have very high levels of radiation at a distance of about 200 meters with this particular kind of configuration, but you also have very high levels immediately beneath the antenna. Now, some antenna providers will tell you the safest place you could be when it comes to an antenna is immediately underneath it. So when people are complaining that they don't want an antenna on their apartment building, um, then um, uh, what the cell phone provider will tell you is, well, if we put it on your neighbors, you're going to get more of the radiation. And so you can see here that this is one of the reasons it's particularly important not to have firefighters' uh, antennas on fire halls. Many of the fire halls, although not the one here, have a flat roof. And the firefighters go on that flat roof to do some of their drills. They also have something called a hose tower. So they, they take the hose up there after they've used it and allow it to dry. So they actually get very close to some of the antennas that are immediately on or um, near their buildings. So this is another reason why um, that is not an ideal place to put them.